live from Joe's mom's basement, it's The Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and we're getting out the crystal ball today to figure out why millions of people are close to retirement and have no savings. Today, to help us figure it out is Army veteran and retirement guru, Benjamin Brandt. You know, I just I got to break script here for just a minute, Joe, and just say, Benjamin, I really have to thank you for the acting you did and Miss Congeniality and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, too. I mean, it was just it's top shelf <laughs> performance, man. It spoke to me. It moved me. And I just I got to be a fanboy here on this one. Plus, the man who's beating the retirement age average and doing it in style, Len Penzo. And a lady writing her own retirement ending in English and Spanish, Paulette Perhatch. But that's not all. Halfway through the show, we're going to find out which panelists can get my ageless trivia question. And now, a guy who can talk about money until the cows come home, it's Joe Saul Cihai. Hey there, stackers, and happy Friday to you. Thank you for the introduction, Doug. I am Joe Saul Cihai, Average Joe Money on Twitter. And what a fun day we're going to have today, because we're going to help more people retire on time. If not early, I'm super pumped about that. I'm pumped that we've got these people with us. We'll introduce our special guest here in just a moment. But uh, let's start off with a man deep under Los Angeles in his bunker with the tinfoil hat. It's Mr. Len Penzo. How are you, man? I'm doing great. It's one of my favorite topics today. So let's get this party started. You know, Len, you guys in California, you've had the forest fires. You've had the floods. Uh, what if next month we have the locusts? Like, what, what do you do then? You know, we don't need any more bad ideas out here, Joe. Locusts, um, no, I'm still trying to get over the flooding part. Right right now, my backyard is, it's about under an inch of water. We've had uh, so much water and rain here. So let's, let's hold the, the locusts Len, off, please. It, it, the good news, Len, is if you do get another natural disaster, you're never going to have to file taxes. Don't they just keep pushing your tax filing date out? Because of all the stuff going on. So I think maybe you should roll the dice. Locusts, you know, they're, 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 they taste great. <laughs> they're nice and crunchy. That's what I like hear, popcorn. actually. I, you know what? I, I am not opposed to uh, trying a cricket or a, a locust, something like that. I am not opposed to that. If somebody wants to send me a chocolate covered cricket or whatever the heck they make out there. Doug, are you, <laughs> go to Thailand. Doug, are you saying that all this misery is, is just a tax conspiracy? There's always a silver lining. It's all I'm saying. Just, it's just, I mean, no, I'm a glass no, half full guy. You know I th- that. I think that's a bridge too far. I think that that might be. It might be the first sign of the zombie apocalypse, though. Uh, the woman who's always holding off the zombie apocalypse in her bank account is here. I don't know. I'm trying to join them up, Paulette. Paulette Perhatch is here. How are you? I'm doing great. Getting ready to go to Camp Fi this weekend for the first time, so that'll... Put retirement right on the top of mind. It's so fun. So how are you with camping? Are you a big camper? This one is actually half an hour from my house. So uh, having just gotten back from a 10-day camping trip, mostly 70% camping, and a big trip to Seattle where I stayed at four different places, I'm going to come home at night. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. You're not sleeping on the quarter-inch mattresses. And uh, you're not getting the full experience, though, Paulette. Well, I am getting my bed experience, and I'm perfectly happy with that. I would be very happy with that, too. Uh, Joining us as well from the great state of North Dakota, where I got a sticker that said, I saved the best for last. Ben Brandt is here. How are you, man? I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. and Thanks for coming to hang out with me in North Dakota. Oh, that was so fun last summer. And by the way, for people that haven't been to North Dakota, very seriously, what are you waiting for? I mean, you got so excited about it, Ben, you moved there. That's right. Yeah, I moved here. But I think you moved there when you were born, right? Like, yes, I, I think I was like 18 months old, so I had very little say in the whole experience. But I'd like to say I voted for North Dakota. But you did decide to stay. Yes. Uh, we're super happy you're here. Let's talk about your new podcast. You got a brand new podcast out that's all about just the most exciting topic on Earth. Oh, yeah. So me and my buddy, Stephen Jarvis, he's a CPA and I'm a CFP. And we have combined our forces like the like the Power Rangers. And we're talking about the confluence of retirement planning and tax planning. So we call it the least boring tax podcast, also known as the retirement tax podcast. So just to be clear, you're not trying to to compete with that guy that has the sleep with me podcast where he puts you to sleep after like 15 minutes. Uh, results may vary. <laughs> 
Maybe not going after that audience. If people find it right where they find your show, uh, retirement starts today, right? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, search Benjamin Brandt on any of your podcast catchers or retirement, and we'll probably pop up in all the uh, all the top spots. Yeah, and Paul, just back to you for just a second before we get rolling. You working on any good financial pieces right now? Financial pieces, I'm doing another possible money memoir proposal. I had one in 2016 that didn't get picked up because they wanted a prescriptive money book because we don't have enough of those. <laughs> <We> just, <laughs> there's like three, four, 20,000. Um, so my agent thought now might be a good time to put it out there again. So I just judged up my proposal and um, might be sending it out for a money memoir. We'll see. It turns out, Paulette, we only need one prescriptive book. It came out last year. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it was really good. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Stacked. Oh, yeah, that's right. That one, too. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, now that we have that one, why would we need any other one? Yes. Len Penzo's uh, money memoir is how uh, the Kirkland brand saved his life. I don't know if you know that, Paulette, (laughs) but he's all about Kirkland for the win. I thought it was called Don't, Don't Buy Down by the Tracks. Maybe both, Len. Um, probably, you know, don't buy don't don't buy down by the tracks. That's probably my magnum opus, Paulette. That's very good. I I think that's the big one. But uh, yeah, and Kirk, I don't. I, you know what? I don't discriminate. Kirkland, any any store brand works for me. So Aldi, Trader Aldi, Joe's, absolutely. You're, you're for all of them. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we got uh, Benjamin Brandt here with us, Len Penzo, Paulette Perhatch, Mom's Neighbor Doug. So let's get rolling. Uh, today, we are inspired by a piece from Apex Money Blog. It is a curation site where uh, Jim Wang and J.D. Roth curate some of their favorite pieces that are out in financial land. Just go to apexmoney.com. And instead of focusing on just one story, They focus here on millions of Americans nearing retirement age with no saving. In fact, this piece from CBS News, we used to kick us off today. Millions of Americans nearing their golden years are still financially unprepared for retirement. According to U.S. Census Bureau data, 50 percent of women, 40 percent of men between the ages of 55 and 66. Wait for it. Have no retirement savings. Ben, does that surprise you? Yeah, it's shocking, but not surprising. I, I think it's really hard when, you know, you should be saving in your 20s and 30s, right? Everybody would, would say that, but it's so hard to visualize your future self that it's hard to to ascribe money to a version of your future self when, you know, a lot of people are um, either actively or reactively just living for today. So uh, it's very it's very difficult. Do you think that's the number one reason, Paulette, is that, you know, you and I have talked a lot about how we have a little trouble focusing, you know, sometimes. Is it that we don't focus on retirement so it just gets away from us? Yeah. And I think, you know, there is a cognitive bias where when you think about yourself in the future, it literally um, activates a different part of your brain than thinking about yourself right now. So it really is like this. You're alienated from yourself in the future as far as like your decision making. And there's another, you know, cognitive uh, bias. It's not a bias, but it's this idea that comes from. Um, you know, behavioral economics that we need this nudge, right? And there's a way in which we can be nudged toward behavior. And a lot of people never get that nudge. And so if you don't work for a company, I'm very thankful that my, the company I worked for in college started retirement funds for us. And it just got me started, which was amazing. And so a lot of people are never like, now is the time you start, right? If you only ever work at places that don't have retirement plans, when is the time when you're like, okay, Today's the day I actually am going to start my, you know, um, Roth IRA. I love that. So that can be tough. I love that idea of a nudge and about how just a little mm-hmm. nudge, I think, can go a long way. Uh, Len or Ben, did either of you guys get a nudge at an early age? I, I had a lot of nudges. Yeah, my uh, my grand, my grandfather, would, he worked for a soil conservation. But if financial advisor would have been a profession back in the 50s, he would have been that. And he... Back when CDs used to pay uh, interest, he would he would have one of those engineer papers with the squares on it. He would show me how he would ladder CDs and roll them over and make ladders and things like that. So from a very, very young age, I, I was taught uh, the benefits of saving. Len, it seems like you and Ben's uh, grandpa would have been best friends. All right, it sounds like we have the same notebooks, actually. That's uh, with the ones with the little squares <laughs> you know, on it. How do you I mean, know they weren't, Joe? I, I bet you want them Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is, 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 is Len Benjamin's grandfather... I think Len Penzo might be Benjamin Brandt's grandfather. 
Uh, Benjamin. Uh, yeah, hey, welcome to the Maury Povich great, show, everybody. Benjamin. This is actually a disguised Maury Povich. You are the father. <laughs> <laughs> ben, I'd be Ben, I'd be so afraid. I'd be so afraid right now. But uh, but, Len, did you get a, a nudge at an early age? Yeah, my cousin. I, I've talked about this before. My my cousin CPA coven cousin Kevin is the one. He really opened my eyes to the importance of saving early. Uh, he gave me some really simple examples, like um, uh, you know, if you started, if you if somehow you were able to save starting at age one, maybe your parents put set aside, you know, a thousand dollars a year for six years, the first six years of your life. And then you didn't do anything else the rest of your life. And you earned, I can't remember the percentages right now. So please people don't, don't uh, email me, email Joe, if I've got these numbers wrong, but something like you'd have a million dollars at a 8% return compounded annually by the time you were 65, you know, and those kind of little examples really stuck with me. And, and it, it encouraged me actually to, to, you know, take care of my own situation so yes is this is this doug where where i got it wrong i'm wondering because my cool cousins when i was growing up were teaching me like what acdc was and 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 how to get away with you know murder with your parents yeah were they yes, CPAs? It turns out were they cpas though joe <laughs> They weren't. Len, at the age of eight, is is in his uh, cousin's bedroom learning all about the miracle of compounding interest. Is that is that <laughs> is that what I'm hearing? The cool cousin. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Len. Wow. Well, they were learning about ACDC, too, like as electricity was being released into <laughs> homes. <laughs> That's what Len's ACDC experience They're learning about was. the whole, whole different ACDC. Yeah. Hey, look, I was a nerdy kid. Let's, let's, let's just, I mean, I was a nerdy kid. So, you know, that, that kind of stuff fascinated me when I was younger. And maybe not at eight years old, but definitely when I was in my late teens, that stuff got my attention. It really did. Have you tried playing with fire? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Paulette's about to play with the fire movement. In uh, oh, at, I have regrets about even starting this at the at the uh, what? Why at the at, at Camp Fi? Yeah, you're gonna go play with fire at Camp Fi. Absolutely. What's your speech gonna be about? Oh, I'm not doing one. Just forget that you're not. They, you're you're just going. Well, they invited me to, but I was like, what would I have to talk to people? There's this misconception that just because I wrote this piece that went viral about personal finance that I am this guru and I'm like, I am not. And so I've had this, all this, we, these weird feelings about it paired with the fact that I was doing these two huge events. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do this whole, I don't know if I can prepare a talk. So it was doing a new practice for me, which is saying no to things or not now. And so, um, I just said, I'm going to go check it out this time. And then I was like, oh, duh, I could have just talked about pet sitting. Like I could talk about pet sitting for 20 minutes. Um, but that just occurred to me like yesterday. Oh yeah. So you're going to, I should have done that. You're going to find so out that time. most people that give, give talks at, at these camp fives are not gurus. They're just regular people telling about their experience, which is really fun. But, but yeah, yeah you'll see it. You've got to be a guru. Ben, when your grandfather was, was showing you this stuff, did, did that stick? I mean, have you been good with saving the whole time? In in some aspects, yes. So it hasn't always been like put money in your savings account, saving, but I've been really good at either saving, squirreling money away or investing in myself. So I'm always uh, investing in a new course or a new coach or a new mastermind group or something like that. So I'm either investing in myself or investing in the market. Paul, when did the light bulb come on for you? I'm so waiting. I, <laughs> I, I kind of I feel the same because for me, I never had that light bulb until I got to the point where I'm like, oh, crap, I should start. And then I remember feeling the panic in my early 30s. Then I realized that the business I was building was actually an asset. It, it had never occurred to me that my business that was huge. an asset. Never thought. Yeah, I think we I think that is a definitely like. We need to, to discuss that more because I look at the spreadsheet and I feel terrible. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, I have this whole I have a six figure business, you know, like that is not nothing. So I have to remember um, I was taking an accounting class attempting to understand uh, small business personal or small business finance. And, you know, they said not all assets show up on the balance sheet. And I was like, that is so important to remember. 
Ben? Yeah. Well, so we're in a unique situation as entrepreneurs, especially if we like what we're doing, because we have an opportunity to craft a lifestyle that we never have to retire from. So as long as we're investing in ourselves and making sure we're competitive in the marketplace, I feel that that's actually less, uh, we have less of a reason than a non-entrepreneur to save in traditional uh, traditional aspects like a 401k. You should still do that, uh, but investing in a lifestyle that you don't feel the need to retire from, of course, you need disability insurance and life insurance just in case things don't work out the way that you thought. But I've done a lot less saving in the traditional aspect and more growing my business and then making sure I'm living a life of balance so that I'm you know not burnt out at 60 and hopefully work till I'm, I don't know, Warren Buffett's age. Yeah, right. Uh, but, 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 but Paulette, I think about your business. Your business is dependent on you. So that must lead to thoughts mm-hmm. of how do I make it go beyond Paulette Perhatch to be a business that is replicatable by somebody else? Yeah, and I do have courses that I sell and I have my software for writers. Writers Mission Control Center dot com. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do I need disability insurance like now? Well, yes, unless you have, unless there's some other way for cash to come in, you know, you're, uh, you need own occupation, uh, disability insurance. Own occupation, disability insurance, ONW, which, which especially, which especially is important for you, Paulette, because of the fact that you're dependent on those digits. Um, and if you don't, if you don't have those, if those don't, oh, I type with my toes, (laughs) she's ambidextrous. Well, if the fingers and toes go. Then, then who knows? But own occupation is important, Ben. Besides that, why? Well, so I'm not an insurance expert, but own occupation means that, you know, Paulette is making courses and writing books and doing all sorts of fun things. That's her own occupation versus any occupation, meaning essentially if you can lick an envelope, you won't have a claim because you can do any occupation. So own occupation is more specific, probably more expensive, but that's probably what you want because you want to protect your own abilities uh, and your own income that you're earning now. Uh, uh, Len, that light bulb came on at an early age. Did it ever flicker? Did it ever go away before you got serious about retirement? You know, it didn't, it didn't flicker, but I did realize when I was, when I started out, you're talking about saving and investing. I know, um, uh, I, I started out by saving too much and investing too little. So I understood that, you know, Hey, you got to save money. So, you know, to, to reach some goal down the road. But when I was younger, I was I was too safe and I was not going I was either saving, just putting money in savings accounts, trying to build that way, which was really stupid uh, or and not investing enough. And um, it took a while for that light bulb to go on and go, hey, you're young. It's time to you, know, you need to take risks. You can't just grow your money by saving alone. You have to invest. And that's a key component um, if you if you really want to have enough for what your goals are in your, you know, retirement years. So, uh, yeah, it took me a while to figure that out to not enough saving and, 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 uh, or, or too much saving and and not enough investing. That was the first time that inflation actually made sense to me was when I realized that if I just saved and didn't invest, I was going to have to save dollar for dollar. And then I started doing the math on, you know, the other thing that that, that the light bulb went on is, and people don't think about this too. I know they don't because even now I'm still kind of uh, my head's kind of spinning about the whole thing, but people don't take into account uh, when you, when you've saved this big pile of money that you've got in your, you know, you've got your retirement savings. You don't realize you have to pay taxes. So at some point, most of that money you're saving is a lot of if you're 401k or what have you or a Roth IRA or not a Roth, but a regular IRA, that money has not been taxed. And that is you have to make sure you're you're accounting for those taxes in retirement that you're going to have to pay out. So you have this kind of false sense of security uh, that, you know, but you don't with a Roth, right? I'm sorry, what? With a Roth, unless you have a Roth. Well, correct. IRA. That's why I said I, I misspoke. If I said, yes, Roth, the taxes come out first. Right. But but uh, for the people of the thing traditional. I was here, Len, the expert. Huh? You, she could have talked about that. Paula, you could yeah. talk about that at, at Camp Fi. There you go. I remember it because it's, I always think about like, um, who's that, that old like 80s rock star Roth, David Lee Roth, that his body was pre taxed in the 90s or 80s. I love that. I love that. That's how I remember <laughs> it. Thank you. I tried to tell this to a younger person. They were like, They're like I, I, no I don't one. get it. That's I have not. no idea. I need, yeah. 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 That that always scares me. I always get sad when I tell a joke and somebody's too young to get it. I'm like, oh, come on. 
Not that much of a fossil. I'm fine with time pa- having passed since I was born. I think that's okay. Yeah, but when the joke doesn't go because of that. <laughs> that's, that's how I warmed up for this. It's more about your judgment. That's how I warmed up for this interview. Judgment. I did all those jump kicks. You guys didn't see that I'm just off camera. My David Lee Roth uh, jumping <laughs> kicks. That's how he Ben split his pants was <laughs> to do in one jump kick. Yeah, I did jump kick, not kicks. Um, you know what's funny is that is that for me the uh, 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 the light bulb was my business. But what I realized, and I don't know, Paulette, if you felt the same way too about your business, was then I very quickly realized that. I wasn't diversified. Like all of a sudden I had this retirement asset, but I had zero diversification and that was all based on this. And then I don't know why all of a sudden this idea that, oh my goodness, I don't want it all to be in my business was the reason why I finally got started saving. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I do, I do save, but I am counting on the business. I'm like, come on, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mama needs that anthropology skirt. Do you save or do you invest, Paulette? Um, I invest. I send my $100 a week to Betterment. And then I also invest in paying down my credit card bills, which have peaked again and hit a new digit. And I'm not happy about it. I got a question about the future. Speaking of, of well, I don't know if I'm, I don't terrible. know if I'm happy about it or not. Um, with is it, are these numbers changing? Do you think these numbers are getting better? Because there's people in from 55 to 65 right now. When when I was growing up, uh, Ben, we'll start with you. I didn't see kids in high school on their phone, you know, with Robinhood app, uh, who are trading stocks. Not because I don't think it's because it's just it's just fun. I think it's partly gambling, right? Savings equals gambling for kids. It's like, and then they tell their parents they're saving and parents are happy as all get out. Kid looks at it as gambling. Parents look at it as saving. But, but is this going to maybe back end people into better habits as they get a little bit older and make it easier for them and we'll have more retirement saving? Is this a problem yeah. that's going to go away? I'm confident that it will go away, but probably not right away. Uh, I think that um, there's a lot of speculating. We saw probably more last year than the year before, but lots of speculating, kind of get-rich-quick gambling. Uh, But there's no better time to go broke than when you're 21 and and, and trading penny stocks or whatever it is. But my hope is uh, that those... That interest in money, once you go broke, then it will it'll manifest itself in more healthy areas like uh, investing in index funds, you know, emergency funds, things like that. So I think it's healthy and it's okay to get burned in your early 20s. We just convert that interest into something that's more sustainable long term. So I think while it makes me nervous as an advisor, I think it's a good thing long term. You agree with that, Paula? Absolutely. Well, and Len, I wanted to ask you about about what what Ben said about no better time to go broke than when you're than when you're 21. You know, it, do you think that changes the game as well? You didn't save. You saved a lot of money, but didn't invest. Mm-hmm. We're going to see kids doing a lot of investing and learn how to maybe be responsible <laughs> savers later. Like, take your well, problem because of Robin Hood. We're flipping it on its head. Yes. And I think that's a great point. And, th- and now that could be a problem. Actually, I'm afraid. You know, a lot of the kids today, I mean, that the are out there, good for them investing. And maybe if some of them are more speculating, then, you know, they're taking some w- really wild risks and they're putting instead of speculating with like one or two percent of your your portfolio, they're speculating. They're hit, they're trying to hit the home run right off the bat and they get burned. I'm afraid that they're going to become savers and it, rather than investors. And they're it's still going to backfire on them. So. So that's why it's really important that you have that mix, that portfolio mix up front for your, up, that's appropriate and that you understand that, um, you know, you take as much risk as you're willing to, you know, only that you're willing to handle, knowing that when you're young, you can recover, you know, from from a, a, a downturn. So, um, yeah, it's important. It's just important, though. Don't be a, a speculator. Don't confuse speculating, investing with speculating, because that's where you're going to get in trouble. I think if you're. If you're investing, you'll be fine. But the good news is, Len, if your risk tolerance is back down from speculating on June puts of Apple stock <laughs> into diversification, you still might have an acceptably high risk tolerance to get where you want to go, which is which is much better than trying to get somebody from a savings account right into yeah. uh, into an all stock portfolio. In the second half of this discussion, we're going to talk about what do we do about it? How much of this is is uh, is 
the who you surround yourself with, the value of advisors. Is there anything to be said for scaring yourself, maybe lighting, lighting, a lighting a fire under yourself, uh, any value there, or does that just make it worse? But before we get to that at the halfway point of every Friday show, we have this year long competition going on between our three frequent contributors, Len Penzo, Paulette Perhatch, and our very own OG Benjamin, you're playing on behalf of the OG team, which uh, is good news and bad news. Do you want the good news first or the bad news? Good news first. The good news is you are tied for the lead. You have four points. The bad news is because you are the reigning champion, my friend, that means you have to guess first. Paulette, I actually have some good news for you because you haven't been here in a couple weeks. Janice, Janice Torres and Lacey Langford ripped it up for you. You are Amazing. now tied for first place. Yes. Wow. I think this is the f- first time uh, team up. Uh, well, you came on when it was Team Paula yeah. Pant. And team you brought Paula back. You brought Paula back last year, and now Team Paulette Perhatch tied for first. Len, you're in this weird spot of being in last, which means you're going to go first. You've got three. Score is 4-4-3. We could have a three-way tie at the end of this, but there's we'll never know unless we get a question, and Doug has that. Doug, what's today's trivia question? Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I will never retire. It's not work if you love what you do, right? It also takes a special skill set to pursue my number one passion, hunting garage sales for broken down mowers to fix and flip. But it turns out I'm not the only one saying no to retirement. According to a 2022 Gallup poll, people think they know when they want to retire. But it turns out that just like my lawnmower flipping career, sometimes it doesn't go according to plan. Some people get all skittish about buying a beautiful, absolutely 100% clean mower that just happens to smoke smoke a little. Or, you know, maybe like a chimney, you know, smoke a little more. And others are afraid to tell the boss to take a hike. In either case, we can't always get it right. So let's make that Gallup poll our question. What age do most Americans think they'll retire at? It's my break time, so I'll be back right after I go heat up some of Joe's mom's stew. They say lawnmowers are bad, but how about the gamble of eating stew straight out of the microwave? I mean, how about this question? When I return, will I or won't I have a third degree burn on the roof of my mouth? Am I right? I I think that's the real question, Doug. Doug will be back in a second with the answer. So let's get a lock in our questions or lock in our answers, I guess, not lock in our questions. We have so many questions about Doug, don't we? On a weekly basis. Uh, Benjamin, what age do most Americans actually retire? Actually retire? Well, based on the statistics that you shared, some of them will never retire. But but did you want my guess? Yes. What's the Gallup poll number? No, we don't watch your guess. We'd okay. like you to pontificate. Wait, is it when do they think they'll retire or when do they actually retire? It is what day do they actually okay. retire? What oh, actually. actually oh, retire? okay. Uh, I was going with, uh, I was going with how optimistic are they thinking? Okay. No. What age do they actually retire? I'm going to say 62 because that's Joe. the easiest uh, you can get Social Security. Joe, Joe. Oh, no, I'm wait a minute. It go. is. It is what age it's do most when do they think they'll okay. retire? That changes my answer. That definitely changes my we answer. Just can't leave like this. Leave the <laughs> trivia to me, dude. <laughs> I got it. I got lost. Uh, uh, lawnmowers and stew, and I don't know what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> you I have no idea. <laughs> How am I? I didn't write it. I had no idea. It wasn't me. Not this time. All right, Ben. All right. So my guess is based on uh, we're we're being overly optimistic and we like nice round numbers. So we think we're going to retire at 60. At 60. Paulette, what do you think about that oh, answer? I don't get to Chelsea Brennan, anybody? Um, well, yeah, you can, but you might right. get sandwiched. A lot harder not going, going last. The other way, I was thinking people were like, I'm never going to retire. <laughs> I'm going to say 70. Age 70. Len, what are you going to do with those two numbers? Yeah, Len. Well, that's a, that's a tough. I was hoping you'd say like 60 you were years hoping, in one you? day. You were hoping. Paulette. You wanted to That would have made Brennan. my job a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Now, 70 is a good, a good guess because I was thinking a lot of them were going to say, like, like Ben was suggesting, that they'll never retire. Um, wow. I, I, I really want to say higher than 70 but gosh oh oh my gosh this is hard 
this is harder than I thought going last. I'm going to say, gosh, do most people think they're going to retire after 70? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm going to kick myself if I don't get All this. All right, text me when this is over. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go below 70. I'm going to say uh, 69 years, 364 days. Wow. <laughs> By one day. <laughs> and, and and not uh, t- uh, 23 hours and 59 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Let's don't wanna, we don't want to leave any room too for far. <laughs> so Len takes the under on the bigger number. And uh, we've yeah. got age 60, age 70, and age 69 and all the change until 69 and New Year's Eve. Just before the, the ball drops, uh, we'd love to tell you who the winner is. And we don't uh, play that way, though. We'll be right back. All right. We started off, Ben, age 60. You set the bar. Everybody else went it, a lot older. What do you think? You feeling good? I am brimming with unearned confidence, like every day in my life. <laughs> Paulette, if it really is after age 70, if people think they're going to work forever. You got this one locked. I know. I'm, I'm maybe excited. We'll see. Or we have a three-way tie. Len, I, th- Len, I think you have exactly age uh, age 65 on up, right? Because nope. you get it by a day, 66 on up? Or does he get 64 on up? I feel up? like Len's going to get it. Yeah. Um, You know what? Uh, gosh, I'm, I don't want to. I, I, I've got to have this one. I've got to have this one. I feel one. like he does. Do we have If If Len's got it, we got a three-way tie. Uh, Doug? What's our answer, man? Hey there, stackers. I'm side hustling some timer and mower master, Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. And today we're talking about the age Americans expected to retire. It's a number that has gone up by four years since the last Gallup poll 20 years ago and is higher than the reality of when the average retirement age really is. And spoiler alert, it's an age that often doesn't pan out. The poll also shows that 73% of those asked want to go cold turkey into retirement, while 43% want to slowly work their way into retirement. Just like me getting into a cold pool. There's probably (laughs) going to be some shrinkage. So at what age do most Americans think they'll retire? Well, Benjamin, on behalf of OG, was six years off. Paulette Perhatch, on behalf of Paulette Perhatch, was... Four years off. Len Penzo was three years, 364 days, and like 32 seconds off. The answer is 66, which means Len Penzo's our winner. We're not a chicken dinner, but we have a three way tie, ah, folks. A extra. three way yes. tie. Better, better than the NCAA March Madness. This Damn. trivia just keeps on paying out. That was close. That was that was super super close. That's exciting. Congratulations, Mr. Penzo. Thank you. Would you like to Would you like to make a speech? Yes. Um. <laughs> Talk to me this is over. <laughs> I'd like to thank Maybe. Doug for coming up with a great question, and I would like to thank uh, uh, Paulette Where's for moving Academy? to the second last week, so I could go last this week. So where's that Academy you, music? You, the walk off music that they play that gets louder and louder. <laughs> We should have had that to start playing the second he started. Let's go into the second half of our discussion about people retiring with no money and maybe reversing that course. Our discussion today, uh, Ben, is brought to you by Magnify Money. You know what happens when you go to stackybenjamins.com slash magnify money? You have more money to magnify? It is incredible how that works. Absolutely. You go there, stackybenjamins.com slash magnify money. You find out those brick and mortar bank products you've been using all along. Probably not best in class. Lots of online banking happening out there, people. Over 92% of them ranked head to head at magnify money, whether it's checking accounts, CD rates, savings accounts, and that changes depending on where you are in the nation. So put in your zip code and you'll very quickly get a list of these are the top rates. These are lowest rates, plus any issues in getting into them. If you need to have $10,000 to invest, $5,000 and how easy the bank is to work with. Lots of ratings there, too. StackyBenjamins.com slash magnify money so that you can get a better banking experience. All right. JL Collins 
has a piece that uh, Jim Wang references here at Apex Money talking about somebody investing in their home, which, Len, I want to start with you. Saving for saving for retirement, saving saying my home is my number one retirement asset. When I was a financial planner, was always the thing that made me just roll my eyes. I don't think we see that as much today as we did back then. But how much of not retiring is being in the wrong investment? Do you think how important is it to pick the right investment vehicle? Well, I, when it comes to retirement, I think you should first off. I think everybody should when when they're figuring that number out, don't include your your home equity at all. I, it, that to me makes no sense at all. So the other thing is when you retire, I mean, like I said, you've got to be more risk. You got to take more risk when you're younger, and when you're older, like me, you want to be make sure you're kind of less risky. So you don't want to. You know, you're you're a lot more vulnerable when you're older, mainly because you have less years to recover from any mistakes. So you want to be a little more conservative. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's what you have to do when, you know, it, it all depends on your age. Ben, do we need to get all nerdy about our asset allocation, especially when we're starting out? No, no. You just want a lot of upside and a lot of flexibility. And so to me, that screams Roth. Uh, we already have paid the tax bill and that's usually our highest uh, our most aggressive asset that's going to grow and we can access it even before we turn traditional retirement age. So you want high growth and you want flexibility and you want to set it and forget it in the famous words of uh, Ron Popeil. So, so, so uh, high, high growth means uh, diversified stocks, like an exchange traded fund then? Yeah. You want to go more equities than bonds and cash. Yeah. You need a longer timeline to make that work, but that's what I would generally suggest. So Ben, let me let me ask. I wanted to ask Ben about the Roth IRA. So I think the Roth IRA, when you're younger, that that's great because right because you're in a lower tax bracket. But there's somewhere as you, you your career, you move up on your career or, or your business, and you're making more and more money. I mean, there's got to be a point where you're going to switch over, right, you, between from Roth to the other traditional, more traditional IRA, correct? Yeah, that's just going to be based on personal pain tolerance. You know, we we generally think that taxes are going to be lower when we retire, but that's that's probably not a, a guarantee. We also think our income sometimes is going to be lower in retirement. Also, that's personal dependent, but I think it's your own pain tolerance for taxes. So whenever you meet with your accountant and you find that bill and it's way more than you thought, that's usually the time when people say, okay, now we're in the traditional 401k territory, not the Roth 401k territory. That's how it was for me. My income got too high and I said, okay, it's time to defer um, it's hard to pay so much in taxes. How much are you getting started and getting rolling on on this? Uh, if it's not getting the right exact investment, Paula, how much do you think is surround sound? Surrounding yourself with the right messages, the right people. So huge. I mean, that's a big part of why I'm going to Camp Fi this weekend, because I'm just like, I need to get back in reality, you know, and that's why when I was getting out of debt, I made myself listen to Dave Ramsey, which I wouldn't do today, but I made myself listen to Dave Ramsey every day. And it was like that. was I just made that be the voice in my head pounding into my head that I need was to Was Uncle say. Dave yelling at you? I needed Uncle, Uncle Dave. Dave I, have, I was like, a... seriously, I have like an essay idea. It'd be like daddy issues and Dave Ramsey. It's like... <laughs> I have a problem. Yeah. So I just needed someone yeah. to yell at me. Well, Len, it was clearly surround sound with you, with your cousin. You thought the taxes and, and, um, and, and all this stuff was cool. Taxes were cool. Well, I don't well, think. Well, yeah, your CPA, your CPA. Do, do, do I have to remind you of your story? <laughs> no, but what is, what's the taxes? I don't think taxes are cool. I don't think. Ta- no, but I like society. tax planning. Tax huh? planning is cool. Oh, yeah. And, and, oh, absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. You got to think you got to think ahead of time. Absol- absolutely. There we go. I mean, that's, I mean got to um, start Uncle Len to get him started. I'm sorry. Well, you know, I'm getting old. Did you, you know how that works. You... Mid sentence there. <laughs> oh, well, tax planning. <laughs> oh, their taxes, taxes are, are not planning. Is tax awesome. planning. <laughs> Amazing. Tax planning. That's a good thing. No, we taxes, do now? Are, taxes are bad. Do we have time? It's like all of a sudden I brought out a popsicle halfway through his school. <laughs> oh, hey. Where's there my pudding it is. cup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for you, it was surround sound. What's my point? Your cool yes. cousin liked this stuff. So surround sound important to you. Yeah, that, that got me at least got my got me to get interested and, and pay attention. And, and let me you can self-motivate yourself. I, a great way to self-motivate yourself is just 
start trying. And I think most people who are listening to this podcast do it already. But if not, incur- let's say you have your kids, your your kids in their early 20s, encourage them to start tracking their income and outgo. Ask them, do you know what your income and outgo is? You start recording that and you can see that 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 gets you thinking that it just it gets the 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 gears turning in your head about the future and stuff like that, too. So I think that will it, just by tracking your own income and outgo um, that will encourage you kind of automatically, almost organically to, to begin thinking about savings in the future. You, you know what excited me on that on that point, Len, which I find kind of bizarre was when somebody said, uh, what does it cost you to just live a day? Like, how much money do you need to bring in in an average day to be just neutral? And I would just, in, in, in my in my early savings, I would just try to make every day neutral. You know, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if I could just bring that amount in every day mm-hmm. yep. and not, not, uh, not screw myself more, yep. then, I was, then it was pretty good. But I didn't even know that number. Like, setting a budget didn't make any sense to me. But once I was like, oh, I got to bring in at least as much as I consume. I don't know why the light bulb turned on because of that. Ben, for you, it was also surround sound with your grandpa, it sounds like. It was, yeah. It was uh, save early and often. And But when I when I started my business, there wasn't a lot of money to save. So there was a, a pause in there, the traditional saving. But again, I was investing in myself, investing in my business. And, and uh, hopefully it all works out. Studies, Ben, show that we're leaving about half of people behind, right? I mean, this is another indication of half of people being being left behind. We have this uh, stat that I quote a lot about people crying about their money. Um, there's so many resources out there. We hear, though, that people don't look at their financial situation because it will they're afraid of it. Mm-hmm. Right. If I get if I if I put it all out in front of me, I'm going to be very afraid. But is there leverage in scaring yourself? Is it good to scare yourself when you're first starting out? It could be if that's the if that's the way that you're motivated. I think it could be. Uh, it's kind of like what what Len said. You know, you can't expect to improve something that you're not measuring. So if that's what if fear speaks to you, that's okay. If uh, kind of gamifying it and measuring it and trying to you know beat yourself, you know, quarter over quarter, year over year, if that's what motivates you, but you've got to find what really speaks to you. I mean, if if you're trying to scare the wrong person or motivate the wrong person via gamification. Uh, it wouldn't work. So you've got to know what resonates with you and then, and then try to find something that fits that. Mm-hmm. Paula, does fear work for you? Yes. I it, like reminded me of like something that doesn't work for me is like with ADHD. I feel like a lot of people talk to you like you're an idiot. They're like, just blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, that absolutely makes sense on, po- on paper. But like in my dopamine, you know, starved brain, like going to get that avocado toast sounds amazing in the moment. And I don't care about the future and sorry, you know, it's like that kind of stuff is not going to work for me. So, um, yeah, I think the thing about, I think it's actually makes you less fearful when you actually face it because it's like, before it's, you know, you're just like, you're afraid of it. And then you're like, you have to kind of look at the monster and be like, this is what it actually is. And then once you know, you can address a number, you can't address or make a plan around just general fear about your future. You can say, okay, I know I need minimum this, you know, to be safe. I would like to have this to be a little more comfortable. What does that look like? Right. And like, I am an Excel queen. So I love getting in there with, with all the charts and the graphs and the whatnots. What's your number one piece of advice, Len, for people that haven't started yet to maybe help them get going? Uh, I'd say go for the what I call low hanging fruit. So low hanging fruit, if you're if you're not if you don't have your own business and you're working for somebody uh, like 401k match, right? At least save up to the 401k match. You let the employer uh, he's basically doubling you, whatever you're putting in. So it's basically it's a risk free investment up to that match. He's matching 100 percent. So um you know, stuff like that. Start that way e- easily. And then if you can automate some of your savings, start small, you know, maybe take a percent out of your pay. And then with each raise, uh, increase that number. You can you can do it gradually and painlessly. Down. It's funny you say that, Len, because I was at a coaching session yesterday and another entrepreneur was talking to me about how he just got diagnosed with with ADHD at uh, probably age 45 was was finally diagnosed. And he now has been working with an ADD coach. And this is really interesting because we hear all the time, Len, to peel off the tough stuff first, right? Get You only have so much battery 
do the things that are difficult first. He said that when it comes to people with ADD, ADHD, do what you said. Do the easy mm. stuff first. Mm. Have you found, Paulette, that that works better for you to do the easy stuff first? He said for two reasons. Yeah. Number one, you get your you get your brain in this wind condition. And number two is you get so excited about it. By the way, he also his coach also said set a timer so that you have to stop that thing your brain loves so you don't just do that one thing all day. And instead, then you get into the difficult stuff later. And after you've had all these wins, at the end of the day, you're much more likely to tie, to tackle the tough stuff. I th- that's a, there's such an argument for both. Um, I what do I do? I kind of go where my energy is, and I'm like, if this is something I wanted to do anyway, and it's on my calendar for later, but it's something I can do right now. I find after like two o'clock, I'm not good for creative stuff. I'm more like I can do administrative things, or you know, yeah. just like plan. But like, I don't really have access nap. to my full brain, and I like to do the things like for me, my artistic. <laughs> um, what did you say? I said nap. nap. After two o'clock, I could oh. nap thousand percent yeah 30 30 percent of my, the days you'll find me napping at two my, my my calendar after 2 p.m usually says do all this administrative stuff and that is nap time it yeah. is like oh yeah i'll do that later do the, um, anyway yeah. back to you so um you know and i try to keep the beginning of my day for kind of my um you know creative work or walking my friend's kid to a daycare with her and then getting a croissant as i did this morning it was great Ben, what's your best advice? Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of along the lines of get that easy win first. This is a little bit embarrassing, but when I make a to do list, I'll often write down something that I already did just so I can cross it off. Well done. And yeah, we're there. Momentum win. We're there with you. Okay, I'm not alone. Okay, good. Me too. Me I took too. a risk. I took a risk by admitting that. I'm glad I'm uh, in like company. Well, well, that's actually I can't remember the name of the general, but his famous speech about make your bed. It's a, it's the first thing you do every morning is make your bed. Yeah. It's it gives you a sense of accomplishment. You check the box and get Did you then started. Did say then write make your bed on the list and check it off? But I like how Ben, yeah, if he probably. made his bed yesterday, he just checks it off. Like, that's, <laughs> that's fantastic. It's even better. He hey, I want to I want to know if Paulette do, Paulette, do you put butter on your croissants? No, they're already filled with cream cheese and guava. That doesn't stop Len. I mean, maybe a plain croissant, but there's so much that, like, what makes a croissant a croissant is that there's butter in every single layer. Everywhere you see a puff, that is a layer of butter. So, no, I think. Oh, I thought you were. Mm. I thought Len was pro more butter. He's not pro more butter. Uh, Actually, I am pro more pro butter, but the croissant might be just a little pushing pushing it there yeah i well, love butter though. no 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 it is totally encouraged or just go to france and put you a bunch of nutella on, on it and call it breakfast and wonder why you don't live in that country why don't i live here <laughs> i wonder how these people they're not all 800 they're pounds, like we don't have seconds right? i was like you have first of nutella and croissant for breakfast so what am i doing wrong uh, yeah of the richest food ever just oh fantastic. i gained oh i think i was in i was in france for two and a half weeks and I gained a solid 10 pounds and I was like, wow, girl, you did it. It is <laughs> just really did it. Those like recollect like, sandwiches where there's like the wheel of cheese and they melt the thing and they're just like, <laughs> make it into a, a cheese luge onto like a piece of bread. Right and like, here you go. And you're like, that sounds like a great game show. Doesn't this it? Is, the wheel of cheese. This seems like something I would do in my room by myself depressed. Like I didn't, I can't believe this is socially acceptable over here. <laughs> I actually, when we were in Bordeaux, we went to a restaurant that was in a cellar. It was the cheese cellar and it was cheese only. You could get wine to go with your cheese and you'd open up the door to the room with the cheese, which was, you know, sealed off and controlled. Every time you open the door, a noise went. It was, it was, it was quite the place. Oh, I need to. The cheese cellar. I need to get with you about that. Um, let's, let's was, that was, cutting the cheese? was that the sound of people cutting the cheese? No, that was the sound of of some cow. However, (laughs) and I'm not talking about your cow imitation. Hold on, hold on. That's your cow imitation? Moo. (laughs) Oh, I needed to be more moo. Is that it? I don't know. How do we get off this no topic? Idea. We're on this great topic, and also we're talking about cheese. Oh, out of ben, no, Len, Len asked Paulette if she puts butter on her croissant. And, and we were off and running. Yes. By the way, it was a fantastic uh, it was a fantastic meal. I don't know why all cheese would be a great meal, but it was a great meal, and I didn't poop for a week. So there you go. <laughs> Both of those things. 
<laughs> anyway, let's get back on this. Uh, uh, ben, I have another I have another question, which is we, we listed a bunch of reasons why, you know, people people don't get there. They don't have the right surround sound. Maybe they need to scare themselves a little bit. Maybe they maybe they didn't have the right light bulb. They 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 weren't thinking about investing versus saving. But we never, ever once touched on the number one thing that I see that is the reason why people don't get there. When I when I search online. Number one thing all these financial writers write about, you're paying too much in fees, dude. You're paying too much in fees. How come we just had a conversation for almost an hour and we didn't talk about fees? Because price only matters in the absence of value. If you're if you're getting extreme value from something, you're never going to look at what the fee is. So uh, that that would be my that would be my two cents. Len, that was that was awesome. I, I I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that from you, Ben, if you don't mind. I think that's. <laughs> I have nothing to add. I, That's excellent. But do we, do, so, so do we help or do we hang ourselves when we online? Because the second that we see this, the number one piece of advice I read on the internet, right? Pay less in fees, which means Paulette, that, that for most of us, the number one thing we see is don't get help. Right? I don't, I Are have to be honest, up? I don't understand the whole fee thing. That is like one area where it's like, as I get educated, it's like the darkness turns to light and I can see that's one area where I'm like, I don't know how much I'm paying in fees. I don't know what it's going to cost me. I have no idea. Well, you probably should, number one. But number two is, do we hang ourselves, though? Because that's the number one thing we see. Mm-hmm. Like, we're telling people, don't go get help because we're so afraid of this fee mm-hmm. monster. Yeah, I would say don't be blind to fees. I mean, the fees can definitely add up. But make sure you're getting maximum value for your fees. So investigate to make sure you're not paying hidden fees. Um, but uh, I would say, I would say, no hidden fees, but make sure you're getting some value for your fee. Yeah, if somebody's doing some work for you, they're getting paid. It. Yeah, right. Re- reevaluate at the end of the year. Were, was the fees you paid was it worth? Was it worth it? Yeah. Like you said, Ben, it's, it's value. I mean, evaluate. Are you getting value from those fees? If you're not, then stop. Yeah, because I'm with you. Don't pay those fees, right? There's if, if if money's just going out the window, don't pay that. But just. I- and I would say also know, know your exit strategy as well. Like, are you signing a long-term contract that, that there are fees that are hidden that you're not going to be able to get out of? So if you're in a fee situation, make sure that you know how you can terminate that the minute you're not seeing the value. Don't say that. That's how, I, how we've kept Len Penzo here for 12 years. <laughs> do not. Do, don't even bring that up. Like, we've, we've been hiding that back-end fee from him for a long time. Yeah, I will uh, say this. You know, I have a managed I, – I I'm in – a one one of my IRAs, I have a managed IRA, and and at the fee is one uh, percent, and I evaluate that every year. Is if if they're if they're performing well, because I'm not an expert in the IRA uh, sector that I've invested in this particular this particular IRA. So I'm trusting the people who are running this. As long as they are showing returns, then I have no problem paying that fee because I would probably do much worse trying to do invest on my own in a, in the particular sector. So. You know, you just have to evaluate. All Len stuff is in Ben, the different precious metals. He's got that piece down. Well, not all of it, <laughs> but, but when it, I, I know I'm kidding. I, I, I am totally kidding. All right. I think that's a great place. Great place to leave it. I think the surround sound piece, I think uh, maybe scaring yourself. I like the idea of knowing yourself and uh, don't let leather life get in the way. Let's find out what's going on where each of you are. We'll have our guest of honor go last. Paulette Perhatch, not only are you off to Camp Fi, what else is coming up for you? You've always got something exciting going on. Yes, and that is my problem. I need to stay in one place and handle my life. Um, So I'm going to be doing that over the next few months. And uh, coaching writers, setting up new programs. I actually decided after the last writing workshop I went to or conference. So many people came up to me uh, at my booth and thanked me for workshops I've done, for coaching, for a very important meeting um, or the writer's welcome kit that I just decided I'm going to kind of like, I'm going to do a shift from doing a lot of freelance corporate writing to just helping writers. So I'm shifting my business toward really just assisting writers um, by providing everything they need to uh, make the writing life easier and more fun. So if people have blogs out there or are writers in any way, I'm here to help and they can look. You're so good. Yeah, you're, you're, you're so good at it. And the number of people, by the way, that came up to me at economy talking about your writing and the mm-hmm. fact that, that we get to, interface with you here on stacking benjamins like it is just it's yeah nice yeah it seems when you want to hire somebody to do something well you hire people that are best in class 
So Paulette, what's the what's the link we go uh, to? That writer Paulette dot com. That writer Paulette dot com. Mr. Penzo, what's going on at Lenpenzo dot com? Uh, you know what? I I can't, I don't. I haven't got I this uh, week's plan. I haven't got the main article plan. So, it, it, but you can always stop by, on, especially on Saturday mornings. I, ha- I publish my black coffee. It's uh, up. It's the week's hap- a review of the hap- the week's happenings, macroeconomics. Uh, it's just a fun little. I you know it's doom and gloom, but it's got a, a lot of. It's really fun, actually. You it's, can. It's, you can it's, hear uh, how much fun you have writing that <laughs> in the words. I do like, have fun I am, writing it. I, I have fun writing, it and it's and it's actually quite entertaining. I, I take uh, the best stuff off of Twitter. I take the best uh, 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 comics that are that com- commentary on the macroeconomics for the week, and it's it's really it's quite a it's it's actually quite fun. Uh, if you have nice any, uh, if you appreciate sarcasm at all, there might be a little bit on yeah. on that uh, in that post. But it, it's, it's fun. Yeah, yes. come on by. Good stuff. Join the join the join the fun, Mister Brand. Thank you so much for another uh, great appearance. I appreciate you so much, man. Oh, it's my pleasure. Well, so let's uh, let's talk about it. What's something that's happening in either one of the podcasts? Well, we've got new episodes every Monday on Retirement Starts Today. We talk about how to spend more money, pay less taxes, and have an even better retirement. Uh, so that's at retirement starts today radio.com. And then our tax podcast, the retirement tax podcast, the least boring tax podcast. That's at <laughs> retirement tax podcast.com. And then we have a new offering for people that want to dive deeper in retirement and tax content. We have retirement income.university. It's our it's our new course that we launched this year. Nice. Retirement income.university. Would you believe they let anybody buy the dot university uh, suffix? I was shocked. That is to find scary. That, out. that actually is so scary. I mean, and I'm not even kidding. That is very scary. <laughs> you, is. you having it does not scare me at all. But the fact that anybody can get that is, uh, yeah, that's that's tough. It, it sounds like dot edu, but not quite. By the way, the, the 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 least boring tax podcast. So you're saying it's less boring than the other one. <laughs> so we're in a we're we're in an interesting position as financial podcasters because the people that need to hear our content the most are the people that are probably not looking for it. Uh, so we want to be a little bit tongue in cheek and say yes, taxes are boring, but we're making them as the least boring as possible, and we have a lot of fun. And I assume people that listen to this show occasionally like to have fun. By the way, talk about sarcasm. Talk about also. Uh, 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 this is a story, Ben, when I first met you, I had oh. no idea how funny you were because you can crack a joke and not crack a smile. And I get like five minutes later, the joke, like, I totally get it. And then I listen to your show and the show's so damn funny. Well, now the shows are so damn funny, but, 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 but you can just that, that, that sense of humor just, it's pretty, pretty awesome. My friend, I did make my stand-up comedy debut on Zoom last year. So try not to be too impressed. <laughs> I just, should we link to that? Should we link to no, that? No, no, that no. is, that is, that is, that is dead. That's gone. Buried to God forever. All we'll evidence to, has been destroyed. We'll link to Paulette. We'll link to Len. We'll link to Ben on our show notes page at stackybenjamins.com. Go check out what they are doing and uh, get some help with your stuff, people. All right, Doug, you got it from here, man. What should we have learned today? Well, Joe, first, some advice from our panel. Be prepared to retire earlier than you expect and possibly with more expenses than you planned. Second, take it from our guest, the great actor, Benjamin Brandt. Understand what motivates you and then gamify some metrics that'll help you keep your eyes on the prize, which must have been what he did to score that sweet role on Law & Order. But the big lesson, when you pick up mowers off the side of the road, make sure they're not still hot. Owners get real bent out of shape when they come out from their water break and find you loading their mower in the back of your El Camino. Look, Howard, everybody knows if it's on the curb, it's fair game. I'm not going to tell you again. Thanks to Benjamin Brandt for joining us today. You'll find Benjamin's podcast, Retirement Starts Today, wherever you're listening to us right now. We'll also include links in our show notes at stackingbenjamins.com. Thanks to Len Penzo for joining us today. You can find Len at lenpenzo.com slash tax planning is fun. 
Thanks to Paulette Perhatch for joining us. Need to make a better impression with your writing? Looking to break into the business of writing? Paulette is ready to be your writing coach. Head to thatwriterpaulette.com for details. You know, Joe, this part of the credits is so important to me, I had to go put on my favorite shirt. Let's do this. This show is the property of SB Podcasts, LLC, copyright 2023, and is created by Joe Salcihai. Our producer is Karen Repine. This show was written by Joe Salcihai with help from me, Doc G from the Earn and Invest Podcast, and Lacey Langford from the Military Money Show. Kevin Bailey helps us take a deeper dive into all the topics covered on each episode in our newsletter called The 201. You'll find the 411 on all things money at The 201. Just go to stackingbenjamins.com slash 201. Tina Eichenberg makes the video version of this show. Once we bottle up all this goodness, we ship it to our engineer, the amazing Steve Stewart. Steve helps the rest of our team sound nearly as good as I do right now. Want to chat with friends about the show later? Mom's friend Gertrude and Kate Yunkin are our social media coordinators, and Gertrude is the room mother in our Facebook group called The Basement. So say hello when you see us posting online. To join all the basement fun with other stackers, type stackingbenjamins.com slash basement. Not only should you not take advice from these nerds, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, speak with a real financial advisor. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and we'll see you next time back here at the Stacking Benjamin Show. Uh, by the way, so so Benjamin told me when I was uh, visiting with him and his way above his league spouse, way, way. She thought she was marrying the other Benjamin Brett. Honestly, she thought. She must have. I'm like, what is she doing with him? And by the way, Ben did the coolest thing at dinner, which which I have replicated since then. The the, the 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 awesome waiter. She comes out and she says she said dessert, and you said we'll have one of each. And and they had four different desserts, and we tried them all, and they were they're like what Norwegian desserts? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, they were so good, and that was so fun. You know, it's right in the middle of COVID, we're all eating off the same plate. <laughs> <laughs> good for the immune system. <laughs> Not true. But I mean, not true. It wasn't during COVID. But the um, but you told us to go to this thing called the uh, called the because we went it, it. Oh, what's the outdoor play you, called? Oh, the Medora musical and the pitchfork fondue. Yes. So to go to the musical at Theodore Roosevelt National Park. So it, it is this outdoor musical where they start off with like the Pledge of Allegiance or the national anthem. It is all God. Bad jokes and yeehaw family fun. I thought it was a blast. It was like the hokiest, funnest, cheesiest thing. But but beforehand, Ben tells me to go get the pitchfork fondue. Paula, have you had pitchfork fondue? I don't think so. So so here's what happens. This is why they do it in North Dakota. They take a steak, like a ribeye steak. They shove it on the end of a pitchfork. Amazing. They have like a garbage barrel full of hot oil. And they shove the pitchfork in the oil. I don't know. They count to 10 or something. I have no idea. And they pull it out and it goes on a little tin plate. You get some beans. You get some. Oh, yeah. They're playing. They're playing good music. You're eating this. You ate at the the Cowboy Cafe, too, right? At the the Cowboy Cafe. Yeah, it's got all the Cowboy Hall of Fame pictures. It's like an old uh, diner. Yeah, we went there the first day. That That was like the first place we went. That was delicious. And there's a there's a line a mile long to get in. We Love that place. Yeah. Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Have you guys been? Len, have you been to Theodore Roosevelt? No, you know, North Dakota is one of uh, five states that I have not been to. So that's uh, going to be one of the uh, I, I will. When I get to North Dakota, I will be sure to, to ch- check what it out. What are the other four? Uh, Idaho, Montana, um, Wisconsin and Alaska. Yeah. Uh. 
We, we just have not done Hawaii. Hawaii is my last one. Paulette, what about you? Um, I haven't done a lot of them. Yeah. The one you're most excited I, to go to? Um, I would say, well, the one I really want to go to is, well, Yellowstone. I haven't been to Yellowstone or Zion. Oh, that's not a state. But that's when we got, oh, that's when we got, um, we got uh, Idaho was the first time was when we went to, went to Zion. Idaho. Or not to Zion, to uh, Yellowstone. Um, but then I ran the Pocatello Marathon, which, by the way, at the Pocatello Marathon, they take you up. They load everybody into buses. They take you to the top of a mountain. It's pre-dawn and there's stars above. There are there's a goat farm right across the road from where they drop you off. And the dudes of this UPS truck are setting up the starting line. <laughs> I was like, I've been to this party before. <laughs> <laughs> They set up the starting line. I was line in a right, fraternity. <laughs> they set up the starting line right in front of you, and uh, you toss your stuff in the back of the UPS truck, and then you start running, and you run the first thirteen miles down the mountain, like the first, oh, w- yeah. w- w- which I thought was going to be heaven. And then I get to the six mile mark, and I'm with this, uh, I'm with this pace group that's two groups ahead of my normal group, like I'm effing flying down the mountain. And the guy leading the pace group goes, "Hey, you guys are doing great. How's your quads ha- holding up?" And I'm like, quads? And then I start thinking physiology, and I go, oh, sh**. And, uh, yeah, we get to, like, the 13-mile mark, and all of a sudden I'm running with two bricks. Like, right, mm. oh, my God. When it flattened out, then it was it was, mm. it was, was horrible. But I still had my best time. And you know what they give you when you finish? A sack of potatoes. Really? <laughs> they give you a free goat. You get your own goat. Luckily, Paulette, I'd name mine ahead of time. <laughs>